This is the second part of the construction of a fully framed model of HMS Pandora at 148. And just a quick resume for uh, anybody who didn't hear my first talk or uh, can't remember much about it. Pandora was a 24 gun six rate frigate and she was launched on the 17th of May 1779. She rose to fame when in 1790 she was sent in search of the mutineers from HMS Bounty. She made it to Tahiti and captured 12 of the mutineers. However, on her way back, she was wrecked on the Great Barrier Reef. And in 1977, the wreck of Pandora was discovered. And this, of course, has provided a huge amount of data about the vessel. My model is an exact replica at 148 scale. It took me some 14 years to build, that's with many uh, uh, distractions and not always uh, working on it. Virtually everything on her was made from scratch and my guide was a set of admiralty plans through obtained through the National Maritime Museum at Greenwich. And uh, we've just been talking about him, John McKay and also Ron Coleman's book in the Anatomy of the Ship series, the 24 gun frigate Pandora. Well, in these two short talks, I will and, and, and I endeavour to show you slides of my build. I've tried roughly to place these under loose topic headings. However, they're not necessarily in chronological order of the build, as they were taken from my own personal record, and I'm afraid their quality does vary. So, to start. Fittings on the main deck and quarter deck. This is a slide of the ship's pumps. There they are in place on the gun deck. There are two types to draw water up from the bilges. There's the common pumps and then to the right are the two uh, 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 chain pumps. And I'll show them a little bit more in detail on the next slide. Well, on the left, uh, the slide there are the common pumps before installation on the model. These, the tops anyway, were constructed out of brass and when they uh, worked on the real vessel, of course, they worked by suction and were powered by a handle and a ratchet system. The chain pumps, on the other hand, shown there on the right, used a rotary system to haul bilge water up in saucers attached to the chains a pulley circular system that stretched from the top cisterns, which you can see there, to the bilges below. These were powered via the winch bars that stretch across both of the hatches. The ship's stove and the chimney was mainly made from wood on the model with brass additions then painted matte black. It stood under the forecastle on the gun deck and between the after riding bits. Here we are looking forward with the forecastle beams under construction. Ahead of the stove, the tops of the four gear bits and the four topsail shear bits can be seen. And uh, I, I was quite proud of the brass sheaves below the cross pieces that you can just about see there. Forward of the stove on the gun deck are the forward riding bits, which are shown here on the slide on the left. The bit pins, that's their vertical timbers, the darker wood, passes through the gun deck there and are attached to the deck beams of the main deck below them so they could actually take a huge amount of strain. On the right hand picture there are the four gear bits and the four topsail sheet bits. Now here we're looking aft between the four topsail bit pins, which is which are those there, lies the bow sprit step. It's not so easy to see, but it is there, um, into which the bow sprit tenon will eventually fit. And that goes through that hole there. So we're looking aft now. Here I've started to work on the capstans. The barrel or spindle has been turned to size on my lathe and that's showing it there 
on the left and it has been mounted in my milling machine and the slots are being milled to take the whelps which you can see there and that piece of card at the back is just uh, uh, to make sure that I put the uh, the milling in the right place. Top right shows the whelps having been glued in place. Next, the barrel was placed back in the lathe so that the whelps could be turned into shape as shown here on the bottom right. The drum heads were made of two discs. The bottom half of the drum deck, uh, of, the, uh, of the drum head uh, being the thickest was put on a jig as shown there top left. That's the actual drum head there. And below it is uh, the uh, guide for the actual milling. The top and the bottom of the drum have been attached in the top right slide. You can see that there. And I've also, there's a piece of uh, ebony, I think it was, that's gone on the top there of the, of the drum head. And next, the spindle was cut in half, would you believe? It wouldn't have been on the real ship, um, but the spindle is cut in half where it passes through the quarter deck for ease of fitting. I glued black nylon thread into the pre-drilled holes on the capstan to represent bolt heads as shown there on the bottom right. The whole process was repeated for the top capstan which you can see there on the left hand slide, where before fitting the two halves of the spindle have been reunited. Then, as shown on the right slide, the two halves were fitted onto the model, with the lower capstan sitting on its step on the gun deck there. You can just see the step and the lower capstan. And the upper capstan on its step on the quarter deck. You can clearly see the step there. At this stage, all that there was of the quarter deck were these two beams that indeed support the upper step of the capstan. As I say, the, uh, the spindle would never have been broken in half, but it was just purely for ease of fitting on the model. The ship's wheels or helms involved a lot of work with the lathe and was manufactured in a similar way to the drum heads of the capstan with square holes along its rim to take the spokes. You can just make out the, the, the little square holes there. And there, that's one of the spokes being pushed into place. The drum between the wheels, of course, takes the tiller ropes, which pass down through the two decks to the tiller sweep below, as shown there on the right-hand side. Once the ship's wheel was in place, the steering gear indeed could be rigged. And on the left, I'm connecting the tiller ropes to the wheel's drum. You can just see a, 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 a clamp, scissor clamps there, um, holding some of the line and attaching it onto the drum. Also in this slide, there are two pegs you might be able to make out there that are holding the quarter deck hatch grating in place for gluing. On the right, you can see the wheel fully rigged with its lines passing down through the gun deck to the sweep, uh, to the tiller sweep below there. There's, there's the ropes going up and down. On the left, in these uh, two slides, the quarter deck planking has just been started. And on the right, it's been completed. It's planked with the five butt shift pattern used on all the decks, apart actually from the forecastle deck. As with all the decks, black paper separates each plank, representing corking and tar. You can also see the tree nails which anchor the planks into the deck beams. There they are waiting to be sanded down. Note how these planks butt into the margin plate. There, I think it's even better view there, there. With the forecastle, a water plank, waterway plank had to be shaped and fitted around the bow. That's it there, just being placed on, on the left-hand slide there. Note the cat heads and their position below the forecastle 
beans. And there they go down there and that's where they end there. So they're nicely uh, held in place there. Then the margin plank was fitted flush with the waterway plank, which is that plank there in the right hand slide, allowing planking to begin. And like all other decks, each plank, as I think I might have said already, extended the whole length of the deck. And again, you can see the tree nails there waiting to be sanded down. The binnacle is shown on the left. It has two magnetic compasses, and you can just see their faces if you look very carefully, to the left and the right of the binnacle lamp that's there in the center. The right-hand slide uh, shows the binnacle uh, now in place, forward of the wheel. More external fittings. I was particularly pleased with the rails on the forecastle that were fitted over the timber heads as they had to be curved. I puzzled over this for a long time, how to actually do it. The slide on the left shows how, in fact, this was done using a large rectangular piece of wood, the thickness of the final rail. Once fitted over the timber heads, the wood was trimmed to form the rail and a scarf made to receive the next part of the rail as shown on the right hand side. This method was used throughout the model where um, railing uh, ha had, had a turn in it. Decorative sc scrolls, decorative scrolls were added to the ends of railings. There on the left is one of the scrolls waiting to be attached um, to that railing there. Um, just lying on the deck and on the right hand slide there you can it's probably that one there actually which has been attached um, and then all these scrolls here were added as well. The channels were made virtually complete before being fitted and I apologize for the quality of that top left slide with the ironwork and the knees attached. On the right the port mizzen channel has been fitted and fully rigged. Also, you can see the fife rail there uh, being completed with the crocodile clips holding in place the end scrolled fitting, that bit there. I made the chains um, out of brass with the help of various jigs to get uniformity. I showed uh, the, the, that's one of these jigs there on the left hand side. Each chain was silver soldered at the joints. The chains were then fitted as shown on the right. Of course, after they were blackened, um, uh, you can see a yellow tape there uh, just to the left, which gives me um, the actual lie of each of the chains. I should add that, of course, the dead eyes had been made by myself. Stanchions and hammock cradles were made of brass and again silver soldered and then blackened. On the left, I am making the hammock cradles for the breast rail. And on the right, they are being fitted. Of course, they're much too long at this stage and are waiting to be trimmed down. The left slide shows some more of my deck metal work with the forecastle stanchions in place and rigged with their top rope and of course there's an anchor below, but there's the stanchions and there's the line which has been rigged. The right slide shows the hammock cradles at the waist of the ship. Also rigged with top ropes and now netting. The netting I made using a jig as shown in the bottom slide in the middle there. Thread was laid diagonally across it and then using a jig, um, uh, using um, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, then using a shuttle, uh, a, a thread was passed in the opposite uh, diagonal over and under the original thread. All was held in place with a light coating of dilute PVA and seemed to work. I used a Delft uh, mold or molder to make casts for quite a few of the fittings and into the mold I poured a molten pewter mix, as you can see top left. Um, I should hasten to add there was no lead in it. 
The slide um, there in the top left shows the mold having been broken open, uh, open after taking a casting and the casting lies there in the left hand half of it. Top right are four of my anchors uh, which were cast in, in that way and then um, they have their stocks. Now the wooden stocks have been fitted. And in the middle slide, you can see some of these anchors now fully rigged and in place on the vessel. From the inner edge of the gangway, gangways, skid beams were laid across and boat chocks added. These were attached onto the gangways, the actual beams, by the metal brackets, one there shown top right. The stern lamps were made out of brass. The left slide shows one of the patterns etched onto the brass strip, ready to be cut, which I did with my piercing saw. This was then soldered together and into which there was inserted a plastic for glass. And then both the top and the bottom were capped with turned wooden blocks, as shown in this slide on the right. So the black bit um, is, is the brass that's now been uh, made into a, a, a cone, I suppose. The lamp brackets were made and attached onto the stern. You can see that there, that's the, the bracket. Um, and then, of course, the lamps themselves were mounted onto them and I even had a small candle made for each lamp which you can see perhaps a bit more clearly on the right hand side there there's my candle I don't think I'll try lighting it I'm fairly sure and I'm, I'm, I'm open to correction that by 1779 ships names were to be found on their sterns so I made mine by laminating two pieces of wood together with a grain running uh, across each other and then again, using a piercing saw, I was able to cut out the rather delicate letters and uh, attach them to the stern. Rope walk and blocks. I made my own rope walk with the aid of a model railway track and carriage, fishing weights and a set of gear wheels and a battery operated screwdriver. The track sits on a plank which is higher at the at the gear end, as you can see in the slide top left there, I can make three strands, three stranded right-handed layer rope, uh, once attached to the gear wheels there on the bottom left. Um, the strands are passed over a bobbin carried on the railway truck and then tensioned by weights at their end. When the gearing is turned on and rotates, the strands lay themselves up into a single rope at the pointed end of the bobbin. And you can see that uh, moderately clearly on that slide on the right. And as the rope is made there from the pointed end of the bobbin, uh, it, it forces the truck to move up the track. And of course, it uh, adds more tension into the actual rope. I used Cordonet's special cotton thread of various sizes to lay up my ropes. This slide I put in just because it shows some of the rope work on the forecastle, of which there are several different sizes. The thicker ropes were often made by doubling up or even trebling the strands on the rope walk. See, there's a nice big thick one down there, and then these are fairly, uh, slightly thinner. And of course, those there through the stanchions are even thinner. I used various methods for making blocks. Some were turned on my lathe, as shown in the top left there, and the larger ones were laminated, as seen with the cathead blocks, blocks on the right. Incidentally, you can just see the carving of a cat's face at the end there of my cathead. However, the majority of the blocks were made with the use of a jig set on my milling machine producing strips of blocks top left there those lines the black lines are, are, are the guide as to where to put the drill um, which were then trimmed on my table saw picture to the right 
and then each block was rounded by sanding and finished off with a coating of tongue oil and there they are on the right hand side. Armaments. The Pandora carried six pound long guns, 18 pound carronades and half pound swivel guns. For all the gun barrels, I made mold patterns out of wood. Then my Delft casting kit was used to manufacture the actual barrels. Left shows a pattern for the long guns and the right side, the pattern for the carronades temporarily set in a partially made carriage. Interestingly, Pandora did not have her carronades mounted on slide carriages, but on conventional wheeled carriages. And this was to save space and allow more portability to the carronades. In making the carriages for the guns with the use, I did this with the use of jigs through and milling and turning and drilling. I produced a production line. These slides show just some of that process. Top left is the jig uh, in action for making the sides of the carriages. And you can see that will be the, the sides there having been milled with there. And bottom left shows these sides of the carriages having holes drilled in them ready for their ironwork fittings there. Top right, some of the ironwork, the axles and the coins, etc., have yet to be added. Once the wheels were added, the carriage was tongue oiled and left to dry bottom right. That's a complete gun there with its carriage. And the center picture I just put in because it shows my production line in action. Eventually, the long guns and carronades were rigged and set in place. On the left is one of the long guns fully rigged and on the right, one of the carronades. Also, the swivel guns were cast and set on their stocks, so they were mounted above the quarter and forecastle deck taffrails. And then boats. On her voyage to the Pacific, Pandora actually carried five boats, all sitting on skid beams extended over the main hatch. Well, it was three, and then two other boats sat inside um, those three. I decided to show just three of these, the 28-foot pinnace, the 24-foot launch, and the 18-foot jolly boat. Making the boats for Pandora took ages and several attempts. In the end, I stuck the internal shapes of the frames at the station lines drawn along a plywood baseboard using 1.6 millimeter wide cherry sheet. You can just see in the left slide, that's the baseboard there. And those are the stations, those, those pencil markings. Um, and then between these frame shapes, uh, an infill of cheaper wood was added. And that's just happened on that slide there, as shown as the to the left. After sanding the infilled wood down to the top of the cherry, which I've done there, uh, I had, of course, then made a mold of the inside of the boat. Um, so, so you can see that on that right hand slide. I then bent each frame, there they all are, uh, lying on the, on, on the, on, on the dummy, um, uh, using heat to bend them. They were then held in place with a piece of scrap wood. You can see it on the bottom, on the left-hand side there, um, uh, uh, so that they could then be glued into place. I was then able to start planking the boat um, once the keel had been attached, of course, um, as shown on the right. Here, the garboard has been placed and the shear and one other plank has also been added. When all was in place, the boat was lifted off the mold. Now it could be fitted out and the hull finally sanded down. On the left, the pinnace is almost completely fitted out. Oars and rudder need to be added and the stem trimmed. The right slide shows the interior of the almost completed 24 foot launch with the windlass athwartship there. 
The launch sits in a box, which I just made uh, for uh, ease of handling the little boat. Of the boats, the jolly boat was clinker built. That's the one at the top. And the rest were carvel um, as seen of by, that's the pinnace there at the bottom. Finally, a word about her finish. I had no wish to use synthetic materials, and I might have said this before. So as indeed already said, the hull beneath the main whale was coated with tongue oil. Above this, I used beeswax and the decks I left with no finish. Not least as I think that on the real vessel with daily holy stoning, they would have been a light gray color and certainly have no shine to them. There we are. <laughs>